As we go into our praise service this morning, I ask that you would think about the words, think about the amazing blessings that our Heavenly Father has given to us. If you'd like to stand as we sing, you're welcome to do that. Join us in singing Hallelujah for the Cross. I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness if it wasn't for the cross. You have won me with your kindness. Chase me down when I was lost. Where would I be if it wasn't for the cross? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm not. With your blood, you bought my shame was met with mercy now your mercy will be my high song and all the glory oh the power of the cross hallelujah thank you jesus i was a prisoner
Sabbath Church. Let us pray. God in heaven, I thank you so much for being such a wonderful and loving Father. Thank you so much for your love and your mercy towards us. And God, at this moment, we come before you today asking that you would kill the noise. Calm our hearts, our minds. Open up our ears so that we can hear you speak today. God, I pray that I may be faded away, and that you may take presence today. Speak as you always have with power and authority and love. In Jesus' name I pray. My wife has a, I don't know whether to call it a gift or, hey, Brother Marquez. I'm seeing people and I'm like, hey. My wife has a particular, I don't know if it's a gift or if it's an ability. I'm going to call it an ability. I won't give her all that much credit. <laughs> and it gets on my nerves sometimes. I will admit. My kids are taking up after her. So what's that ability? Uh, we'll be riding. Uh, we'll be on the road. It's a particularly when when we're on a long trip. It's a road trip, not really road trip, but a long trip. <laughs> and uh, she'll look out into the sky, and if there are a lot of clouds, she can almost always, actually I will say always, find some sort of an animal, figure, um, anything in the clouds. And we'll be driving. And she'll be like, oh, look, it's an elephant. And where? 
relationship right there do you see it you got the ears right there and then the trunk and then the the, the body and oh look there it's the wee little tail <laughs> she gets into it and i'll look and i'll be like okay uh, nope, I can't see it. She, and then she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right there. It's right there. Look, 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 look. Look, if you see right over there, you can see the trunk. And then all of a sudden, I'll hear my kids. Oh, mommy, I see it. I see it. I see it. And I'm like, what are you guys seeing? I can't see anything. And I'll look up and I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then, and then she'll be like, or later on, she'll be like, oh, and look over there. There's a dog. There's a man walking a dog. And then the kids will be like, yeah, mommy, I see it. Yeah, there's a leash, there's a man, there's a dog. And, and, I'm, and I'm looking and I'm like, man, you guys are crazy because I can't, I, I just don't see it. How many of you guys have played that game? How many of you guys are able to find figures in the clouds? How many of you guys can't find it no matter if they pay you a million bucks? <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at. And it, it, and it gets on my nerves. When something is right in front of you and you can't see it. How many of us have gone through through the situation of looking for something frantically? You're desperate. You're looking for something and you spend time looking for it. All the meanwhile, it is right in front of your face. How many of us have gone through that situation? Is, is it a good feeling? No. No. Sometimes it takes someone else to come and tell us, hey, 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 what are you looking for? I've I've done it plenty of times with either my wife or my uncle or anyone. What are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for my pen. I just had it. I just said, oh, here it is. It's right in front of you. The ability to not see that which is right in front of us. It's frustrating. I'd like for us to turn to the book of Luke. Chapter 17, Luke chapter 17. We're going to start in verse 20 to 21. Luke 17, verse 20 to 21. I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken on the screen, you've got uh, ESV. I'll be reading out of NRSV, but any version that you have is completely fine. Luke 17, verse 20 and 21. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming. And he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among us. The Pharisees were a curious bunch in the time of Jesus. They were self-proclaimed people of the law. They self-proclaimed because when the time came to, um, there was a specific time in history where for fear of the traditions of the Jews to, to just dissipate, there came a group of people known as we know the Pharisees who said, well, you know what? We know how scripture is to be interpreted. We are the ones who are able to understand scripture. If anyone has any question regarding scripture, come and ask us. And there was a common, there, there was always this debate between re different religious sects in the time of Jesus. You had the Pharisees who had their own beliefs regarding scripture. You had the Sadducees and people would always, who, who they were more of a political power. They had more to do with the politics of, of, of the Jews. But every time, it, anytime it came down to scripture and the interpretation, the Pharisees were always the first ones to say, yeah, we know exactly what this is about. So they go to Jesus with a very common debate of Jesus' time. And that debate had to do with the kingdom of heaven. You see, 
when when Jesus when actually they bring up the the notion of the kingdom of heaven there is a lot of background or it, it means a lot to the Israel to the nation of Israel and to the Jews the kingdom of heaven for them basically meant their that their enemies would be subdued the kingdom of heaven for the Jews, for the nation of Israel, meant that their sins as a nation would be forgiven. The kingdom of heaven for the, for the Jews, for the Israelites, meant that God would establish his kingdom. It would, Caesar would no longer be king. Herod would no longer be the client king. That there would be like this, um, this uprising or a rebellion, visible uprising or rebellion against the earthly kingdom. It would, be, it would be something so visible that even the armies of heaven would take presence. And everyone would be able to see that that which you are looking at is truly the kingdom of heaven. But then comes Jesus as he preaches, teaches, and heals. And he introduces the concept to everyone who he preaches to that the kingdom of heaven is already here. Matter of fact, if we look at the original Greek, the original Greek that is, that is mentioned in this verse, in verse 21, when he says uh, the kingdom of God is among you, it, the word is antos humon, which basically means it is within your grasp. In other words, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is very, very close to you. And, and as Jesus is telling this to the Pharisees, it becomes like a cloud in the sky moment. Because the Pharisees are like, what are you talking about? We don't understand. There's no physical evidence that the kingdom of God is here. We don't actually see God here on the throne. We actually don't see armies of angel hosts that are taking possession, that are uprising against the armies of the, or the kingdoms of the earth. And in all of Jesus' ministry, Jesus was trying to communicate that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, was unlike any kingdom of this earth. It was a kingdom that was based on God's grace and mercy. It was a kingdom that you preached about it in order to gain citizens. It was a kingdom in which the grace of God was first and foremost in letting you into this kingdom. So many times, so many times in scripture do we have Jesus exclaiming, proclaiming, the kingdom of God is like unto this. The kingdom of God is like unto ten virgins, right? Ten bridesmaids, remember that? The kingdom of God is like the sower who went out and started sowing. And he starts describing the kingdom of God and preaching it to all those who will become a part of the kingdom. Something that we see here that is very, very important. Is that as much as Jesus was telling this to the Pharisees. They couldn't see the kingdom of God. They couldn't understand the kingdom of God. If we look in scripture, we'll see that the kingdom of God, uh, the, the kingdom of heaven, 
there were specific citizens who would be entered into this kingdom. And in the Beatitudes of Jesus, we see this, this awesome family portrait of all those who enter the kingdom. We have the poor in spirit. Other than the poor in spirit, we have the mourners, we have the meek, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and those who endure persecution. In order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be sincere, accepting the, the rule and sovereignty of God over any kingdom, over any earthly kingdom. But then why was it that the Pharisees could not see the kingdom of God as being present? Why was it? And everybody pay, trying to look forward to the day when the kingdom would, would come so that they, at that point in time they would be able to enter the kingdom. But Jesus in all of his ministry is preaching, listen, the kingdom of God is already here. You enter it now. Well, I'd like to suggest that the reason why the Pharisees would not, were not able to see the kingdom of God was because they were blinded. They had self-interest that motivated them to do things that weren't of God's will. They would spend their time in all of these different discussions with other religious sects. Oh, well, what you believe is completely wrong. This is the truth. This is how we go about it. And that's, that's it. Plain and simple. You know what? No, 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 no. That's not the true interpretation. That's not, how that's, that's not how this goes. The common debate, the kingdom of God, when it comes, oh man, there are going to be armies. It's, it's going to be awesome. And then we go ahead and we take allegiance to them and we enter into that kingdom of God and we will forever be with the eternal king. And that's how it goes. Their indifferences, their discussions, their self-interest, their motivations, all hindered the Pharisees from actually being able to see the kingdom of God. You see, the kingdom of God was revealed every time someone was healed. God would exercise his power and his sovereignty over that person and say, this is my kingdom, welcome to it. The kingdom of God, God's sovereignty, his power would be exercised every time a demoniac would be freed from the demons that enslaved him or her. The kingdom of God would be visible in all of those who would accept the word of Jesus Christ with humbleness and would seek Jesus and seek God with all of their heart. You see, and it's these, the things that, that the Pharisees were going through, all these useless discussions, arguments, beliefs that impeded them at the moment from seeing the true kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, we, I'm not going to go to a three-point lesson right now, but there are some lessons that we can learn from these two very important verses. First and foremost, the kingdom of God is already here. I'm going to say that again. The kingdom of God is already here. Even if you can't see it. You see, constantly, every single day, God is exercising his power and his sovereignty in the lives of all those who choose today to enter the kingdom. I received a phone call two, three weeks ago from one of our church members, very excited. 
was having heart complications. And, the, and, and there were studies that were made. And, and, and this member decided, you know what, God, I don't want any type of medical procedures. I want to accept you as my creator, the one who, 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 who helped me, who, who created me, knows the insides of me. Would you please take care of my heart? And I received a phone call that when she received all the exams and everything, her heart was fine. The kingdom of God is here. God exercises his power and his sovereignty every single day. Do we see it? Maybe not. Are we, are we in the same boat as the Pharisees? Are we in the same boat as the Pharisees as to where our beliefs and the way that we view the world, wherever, wherever it is that we gain our information from, impede us from seeing the kingdom of God and how it advances every single day. Brothers and sisters, scripture tells me something very important. Scripture says that when, when Jesus was proclaiming to Peter about establishing his church and the mission of the church and the advancement of the kingdom, he says, upon this, I will what? I will place my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Brothers and sisters, I think I've preached on that before. I think I've mentioned it. If not, it has been an AY. This, these verses presupposes that the church, that the kingdom of God is in the offensive position and not the defensive position. This means back in those times, in biblical times, when a kingdom would want to take over another kingdom, the, the first thing that, was, that you had to do, the first thing that you had to conquer was the what? was the gates. If you conquered the gates, you conquered the kingdom. So here Jesus, he's telling his disciples, listen, the kingdom will advance and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In other words, when the kingdom advances, it doesn't matter how much the gates of hell, this world, this earth tries to block it out, tries to tune it out and say, stay out, stay out. The kingdom of God advances. There's nothing that can be done. Do we see it? The kingdom of God as being here? Or do our indifferences, our arguments keep us from not seeing it? Brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling, was calling not only for the Pharisees, but for all those who listen to him to know and acknowledge that there was something greater than the situation that they were going through at that moment. Something that they could focus on. Man. There is something greater that God wants us to focus on now. And I'll just have to come out and say it, brothers and sisters, because I, I, I kind of let it go for a little while. Um, but it, it, it must be said. Right now, there, there is division that is attacking the church. Division. Oh, well, you believe in that? Nah, you're wrong. You should believe in what I believe. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and say it. Depending on wherever it is that we get our information. There's that whole situation of vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Hold up. Oh man, it just got real silent. Before you start throwing your Bibles at me, hold on. 
There are those who strongly believe. Well, in order to make it through this, we need to be vaccinated. There are those who strongly believe. Well, you know what? I don't need to be vaccinated. The decision of vaccination or unvaccination, as much as people may agree or disagree, it is a personal decision. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you decide to get un if you decide to stay unvaccinated, I still love you. You decide to be vaccinated, still love you. But it's when we prescribe to a belief and believe that that is the most pressing and urgent situation that we have to deal with right now that blocks our being able to see the kingdom of God and how it advances. Amen. I'm going to say it right now. Let this go down. Take notes. The mask and vaccination is not the mark of the beast. It is not. Hold up. <laughs> I did. Uh-huh. If we truly want to know what is the mark of the beast and the signs of the end times, then you know what? We're going to have to go ahead and, and get a Bible study going. Come to Wednesday night Bible studies. We'll get into it. Vaccinations, masks, they have nothing to do with the mark of the beast. At all. They have nothing to do. It has absolutely nothing to do with your religious freedom. Because by the grace of God, and I mean our religious freedom, there are some religions that say, oh no, you can't do this or that. By the grace of God, we still have the wonderful opportunity to be able to gather together and worship. By the grace of God, we still have the wonderful privilege of preaching the gospel. But it's when we get into petty indifferences and discussions about how it is that you're wrong and I am right and you should do exactly what I tell you to do. That is what keeps us from seeing the kingdom of God advancing. Not only that, brothers and sisters, but the kingdom of God being here right now, being present, implies that we enter the kingdom when? Now. now. Not then. And there are so many people who are focused on, oh, well, you know what? These are signs of the end times. And you know what? When these signs and, and this and that happens, that means that Jesus is near. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to start getting serious then. As soon as I start, when I see the yellow light, when I see the yellow light, then I'll, I'll, I'll get serious about stopping. When, when, when things start getting really, really serious, then I will go ahead and start being more serious about entering the kingdom. You know what's wrong with that ideology, brothers and sisters? Let's keep on reading Luke 17, 22. Then he said to the disciples, the days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the son of man and you will not see it. They will say to you, look there or look here. Do not go, do not set off in pursuit. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the son of man be in his day. But first, he must endure much suffering and be rejected by this generation. Important. Be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, 
so too will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day of Noah entered the until the day Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed all of them. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day that Lot left Sodom, it rained fire and sulfur from heaven and destroyed all of them. It will be like that on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, anyone on the housetop who has belongings in the house must not come down to take them away. And likewise, anyone in the field must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Those who try to make their life secure will lose it, but those who lose their life will keep it. I tell you on that night, there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding meal together. One will be taken and the other left. Then they asked him, where Lord? He said to them, where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is making a distinction right here. There is a huge difference between the kingdom of God and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Difference. There is a vast difference between the kingdom of God and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus is telling them, listen, when Jesus, when I come back, people are going to be surprised. What do you mean? How so? What do you mean surprised? I thought the scripture says that, that oh, look at the signs. Hey, 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 Jesus is saying that there are still going to be people who are going to be eating and drinking and everything's going to be fine and dandy. They're not going to, really going to realize. You know why? Because they weren't part of the kingdom of heaven. And when Jesus comes, when Jesus returns, whatever arguments kept them from entering into the kingdom of heaven, whatever it was that in their personal life kept them from seeing the kingdom of heaven expanding and, 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 and asking them to become a part of it, they could not see it. So when Jesus returns, he's returning for who? For those who belong to the kingdom of heaven. When we come across the verses, oh, there will be two women in the uh, grinding meal. And two in the bed, one taken and all. Brothers and sisters, we're not talking about a secret rapture. This basically tells us that the kingdom of heaven gives equal opportunity Amen. to both women who were grinding. The kingdom of heaven is presented to both women who were grinding meal. But guess what? One of those women, what? Accepted. And asked for citizenship into the kingdom of heaven. While the other one was so worried about grinding meal that when the time came, she wasn't a citizen of it. There was an equal opportunity for, those, for the two in bed. But only one accepted to become part of or to become a citizen of heaven. Only one was able to see that the kingdom of heaven was already here and decided to enter it that day. While the other one said, nope, I'm good. Brothers and sisters, let us understand today that the kingdom of heaven is here now. You can choose by God's grace to embrace his love, the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for you so that when Jesus comes, you're already a citizen of it. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus comes, he says, yes, they accepted my blood. They accepted my sacrifice. Therefore, they're part of this kingdom. What's keeping us from seeing the kingdom? What's keeping us from seeing that the kingdom is advancing? Is it brotherly love? 
brothers and sisters, love each other. If there are any indifferences between us, let us by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit, resolve those indifferences. Let's not be torn apart by the rhetoric that we hear from the world. If there's one thing that is evident, brothers and sisters, COVID is probably gonna be here to stay. It's the truth. Whatever one decides or one does or doesn't decide to do with their life doesn't mean that you stop loving that person. Doesn't mean that you cast them away. Doesn't mean that you stop a relationship with that person. We are called to love each other and nothing can come between that love. You think that sin came between God's love for you and I? Sin is a horrible virus, worse than COVID. Not at all. Brothers and sisters, I appeal to you. Let us not be blinded by indifferences, arguments, beliefs. Let us love one another. Let us, let us continue and persist in God's love. Let us pray to God so that we can see his kingdom here. And let us be willing to enter his kingdom today. So when the moment comes, when the skies are rolled back like a scroll, when we see Jesus in the midst of millions and millions and millions, innumerable amounts of angels. When we hear Jesus coming again, we can be present among those who will enter the kingdom. Let us stand and sing our closing song.
thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love and how you seek us to be a part of your kingdom today. Let us answer.